Alright, let's make this real simple. Okay, Matthew 25, verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. All right, so he's going to separate the saved from the unsaved. That's judgment day. Judgment is, are you saved? Are you not saved? The judgment is, do you have sin or do you have no sin? The only way to have no sin is if you are born of the Spirit of God. And Jesus Christ covers all your sin. All right, that's the judgment. You have one sin. If you do, you're cast away. If you have zero sin, then you are transformed into immortality. Your immortal body. Okay, it's that simple. And that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Now let's parallel this with uh, many, many verses. But since we're in Matthew 25, let's go to Matthew 24. And we see that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, is when the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then so shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. Right? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. Alright? Now let's parallel this. Alright? And all the holy angels with him when the Son of Man shall come in his glory. That's the same thing. Alright? This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And let's parallel that with what we read in Revelation 1. Let me get to it where it says behold he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him alright this parallels what we're reading in Matthew 24 when it says Jesus shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn and every eye shall see him and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Alright, this is a parallel here and a parallel there. Alright, and he shall separate them, which is the sheep from the goat. Alright, and we also get a parallel in Matthew 13. Alright, let's go there real quick where it talks about the parable of the wheat and the tares. Okay, the wheat and the sheep are the same. The tares and the goats are the same. All right. And the saved and the wheat and the sheep are all the same. All right. And here in this parable, Jesus talks about how let them both grow together until the harvest. The harvest is the end of the the world all right and the harvest is when the angels gather together the elect this is exactly here where are we at here all right let's go down here so shall it be at the end of the world the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just all right all right. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. All right, so this is parallel with what we're reading in Matthew 25 and Matthew 24, and many other places. When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, and the angels will come forth and sever the wicked from among the just all right he shall he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet 
and that they shall gather together his elect. This is all at the end of the world, and Jesus is asked specifically, what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? So the end of the world is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, and it's judgment day, and the saved are separated from the unsaved, and the unsaved are thrown in the fire to be burned and those of us that are saved are gathered in his barn as mentioned here in Matthew 13 this is the same thing um, when it says uh, when the sheep shall divide or I'm sorry the shepherd shall divide his sheep his sheep are the saved and then of course in Matthew 24 gather together his elect now I want you to pay attention to this great sound of a trumpet so now we'll go to let's go to um, uh, let's go to let's go to first Thessalonians 4 all right where it says first the dead in Christ shall rise and then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord now here in verse 16 for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven this is the same thing paralleled here in Matthew 24 when the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and all the tribes of the earth shall mourn when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him this is Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven notice here in 24 where it says he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet and also in first Thessalonians for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God right and the dead in Christ shall rise first this is the separation from the sheep and the goat the separation from the wheat and the tares the harvest the end of the world it's all the same thing all right, and then uh, let's go to um, uh, what is it? Corinthians. Oh, let me think about this a second. First um, Corinthians 15. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Notice that word again. At the last trump. All right. This is again parallel with what we're reading here in Matthew 24 31 with a great sound of a trumpet and what we just read in 1st Thessalonians 4 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed we will put on incorruption and immortality Right, this is all at the end of the world when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Remember what we read in Revelation 1. Behold, he comes with clouds. All right, Exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing the same thing over and over. It is the end of the world. And when it's the end of the world, there's no more chances for the unsaved to be saved. It's it it's over there's no more time to be saved all right it's very simple very easy not hard to understand now if you understand all that and you read Matthew 24 or I'm sorry Revelation 20 and it talks about how they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years then you ought to be able to see that we live and reign with Christ right now during this time period which is a unique time period from the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return from the time he died and resurrected and ascended to heaven to the time he descends from heaven to come back for us to gather us unto himself all right and right now those of us that are born of the Spirit of God the second death has no power over us right now we are priests of God we are a royal priesthood and holy nation a peculiar people right now we are priests of God we are called 
to preach the gospel to every creature. We are priests of God right now, and we reign with Christ right now. How can you rightly say that you are saved if Jesus Christ is not reigning in your life right now? All right. And of course, uh, to further understand Revelation 20, right here we have the great white throne, right? Again, look at this here. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. This is unmistakably Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven. This is when we are lifted up in the air. First the dead in Christ, then those of us which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All right, this is when we are gathered together, and our enemy is gathered together at our feet. This is the purpose of Satan being loose, to go out, deceive the nations, and gather them together. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all. This is all at the end of the world. And of course, this goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 15, where it says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This is when we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air, and our enemy is gathered at our feet, and fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all oh, this is consistent all throughout the Bible and the Lord said unto my Lord sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool we're up in the air our enemies at our feet fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all this is the same thing when it says it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel this is when Christ stomps his foot on head of the serpent and destroys all death all sin all wickedness all evil forever and ever okay now this is consistent all throughout the bible it's the same thing it's told many different ways several different ways um again and again and again and again we just have to connect the dots all right in order to connect the dots we have to have faith that's the key to understanding the Bible is faith okay again here I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee okay this is again this is when we're up in the air and our enemies gathered at our feet this is at the end of the world okay make no mistake about it it's the end of the world and everything's going to be new jesus says behold i make all things new all right so there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth at the end of this world that's going to be it there's going to be no more death all right that means all the unsaved people are destroyed forever there is no more second chances at the end of the world when it's the end of the world, it's the end of the world. All right, and then a new world, an everlasting world, is uh, begins. Okay. Now, like I said, it takes faith. You have to have faith in order to be saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The law is there to be our schoolmaster to bring us to faith in Christ, but once faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We are under the grace of God. We are saved by grace. Now, um, we could go to Hebrews 11 and notice that God saved Noah, and Noah became the heir of the righteousness which is by faith it's always been about faith and so also today when Moses is read the veil is upon their heart so they they that do not believe have a veil upon their heart nevertheless when it shall turn to the Lord when they shall believe in the Lord Jesus Christ the veil shall be taken away so again the key to understanding is faith 
Now, if you don't believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, how can you rightly say that you have faith? All right, every word of God is pure. So I encourage you to believe the Bible that you hold in your hands. Without that faith, how can you have understanding? Faith is the key, it's the secret, it's the way. If we must, wor we must worship God in truth. All right. So I, I think that's it. I'll stop right there. But I just want to give a, a quick example of how simple, how easy all this stuff is. All you have to do is connect the dots and see that all these things line up from the beginning to the end. Very simple. We all know that there's coming an end to this world. This world cannot sustain itself. It's coming to an end. We all know that. And when it comes, when when the end comes, that's it. There are no more second chances. All right. And all these doctrines that teach this wackiness of UFO aliens and second chances and thousand years of peace or whatever, the thousand year reign of Christ. It's, these things are not in the Bible. These ideas are not in the Bible nowhere at all all right and so that's what i want to share with you i want to increase your faith in the word of god and and increase your faith in the lord jesus christ and increase your understanding and knowledge of the bible so that you might help somebody else know the truth because there is so much deception out there in the world today it's worse than ever before consider this the very first thing Jesus says when he's asked, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus says, Take heed that no man deceive you. The deception in this world is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. That's why um, so many, there are fewer and fewer people being saved today. And this number is going to decrease all the way, just like we saw before the flood, when there was only eight saved. Just like what we saw when uh, Sodom was destroyed, there wasn't even ten righteous. Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, being uh, de deceiving and being deceived. And of course, there's the question of when Jesus come. He says. He will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on earth? And why is that? Because of all the deception in the world. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. The deception in this world is growing and getting worse and worse. And it's, all, it's a miracle that anybody gets saved in today's world. Think about our children and what chances do they have when there's this, all this world of wickedness, this world of deception, <clears throat> in particular this idea that the UFOs are going to come and take people away and you're going to have a second chance to be saved. Or this idea that Jesus is going to come and take those of us that are saved away and then you'll get one more chance. This is not true. It's not in the Bible. It's in your movies, but it's not in the book of the Lord.